Hi, this is Gali Gopfarb and welcome to my Govilla Life Coaching videos. Five times a week, I talk about a quote that can help you move your life to a better, healthier, and happier place for you, and I hope you gain a lot of value from these videos. So, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling positive because our quote of the day is about negative thought patterns. Today, the quote of the day is, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thoughts about it. Be aware of the thoughts that you are thinking by Eckhart Tolle. In order to be aware of what you're, you are thinking, you must know what to, to look for. You need to find out your negative thought patterns that hinder your development and stop you from reaching your dreams. So today, I will talk about 12 different faulty thought patterns that hinder growth and what you can do and how you can change them. So the first faulty thought pattern is jumping to conclusions. How many times do we think about something without having the relative, relevant information? We do this so often, but this really hinders our growth. For example, how many times have you thought that some goal was not attainable or that you had to do something specific to reach a goal and found out that someone else had managed to do it without having what you thought was necessary? Our conclusions may or may not be true, but most often they are not true. Ask yourself, where is the evidence for this belief that I have? Ask yourself if you could be jumping to conclusions. People say that you need to have money in order to make money, but this is not true. We've seen before that many people have made money without having money beforehand. You have to have an, an idea in order to make money. This is what I see. But there are so many stories that we tell ourselves that are simply not true. And these stories actually block our path to success. So ask yourself, where in your life are you jumping to conclusions, preventing advancement to success in your, in your life? Now, the second faulty thought pattern is an all or nothing mode of thinking. For example, he never comes on time. She is always negative and so on. This is a kind of black and white thought pattern that blocks out a lot of potential. Where in your life are you thinking in all or nothing terms? Perhaps there are other colors on the spectrum that you are blocking out. Other ways to reach your goal. It takes thinking out of the box to get real success. So let's move on to the third faulty thought pattern, which is placing blame on other people. This is when you do not take full responsibility for your actions and results of your actions. You blame other people for your situation. So how can you move forward when you think that others are to blame for your situation? You will only be able to move forward and advance your dreams when you take on full responsibility for your current situation, or at least most of the responsibility for your current situation, because it is only from this position that you will be able to make the necessary changes needed to move yourself towards your goals. So let's move on to the fourth faulty thought pattern which is using names or tags that put you down. Like, I am stupid, I am s poor, or I am so lazy, when you make a mistake. A competent human being will stay competent as long as their mind will force them to not think anything otherwise. So you are in control of the words that you tell yourself and use your words wisely. Do not talk badly about yourself just because you made a mistake. Ask yourself whether you are focusing on your, more on your weaknesses rather than on your uh, strengths. Your subconscious mind should never hear you say anything bad about yourself because this is much more injurious to your self-esteem than having another person say something bad about you. Because when you start to believe something, it starts to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So let's move on to the fifth faulty thought pattern, and that is having negative expectations. How many times have you spoken negatively about your future? I, I had a client one day who showed me messages on her phone that she sent to her friends two years earlier, saying that she would surely get cancer uh, from all of her stress that she's going through now. And two years later, she is battling with cancer and sitting in my clinic. Think whether you are over-expecting negative outcomes for yourself. You do not want to be telling yourself anything that you do not wish to have happen in your life, ever. 
Ask yourself whether you are really predicting an outcome instead of experimenting and seeing what is really possible. So let's move on to the sixth faulty thought pattern, and that is having low tolerance levels. I can't stand stupid people. I can't stand slow drivers. I don't know uh, X, Y, Z, and I can't to tolerate X, Y, Z. These, there is really no ending to this. But what this does is limit ourselves and limit our, limit our coping abilities and limits our opportunities to grow and increase our self-esteem in the process. This is a real limiting belief. I bet that you can do much more than you believe you can, especially if other people have done it before. So having low tolerance levels only makes you smaller, reduces your self-esteem, and makes you believe much less of yourself. The seventh uh, faulty thought pattern is fear about fe being found out as false. Fear that other people will see you as your real self and not the mask that you put up. This belief disrupts any chance of meaningful relationships and causes major problems in the work environment as well. We are all humans and we all have faults. If you remain authentic and talk about your, your shortcomings, you can re remove this fear and start to live your life with the full potential that you have without fearing making mistakes on the way because these are inevitable anyway. The eighth faulty thought pattern is personalization taking things personally, taking events or people or what people say as personally towards as a direct harm to you. For example, believing that what another person said is your fault because you brought the person. Really, there are endless uh, numbers of examples of this faulty thought pattern of taking things personally. Ask yourself if you are taking things too personally. Not everything has to do with you. When you take things personally, you simply add more stress and anger to your life regularly without any need or reason to do this. Uh, ask yourself if this really has to do with you before you take on the consequences personally. The ninth faulty thought pattern is disproportionate thinking. When you blow events out of proportion, like this is my destiny is here on the line, or this is the worst it absolutely gets, or it couldn't get any better, this is the best it could be. You, you're overreacting. Your expectations are then based on assumptions without having any real proportions. This will lead to excessive anxiety and worry and stress Anxiety and worry in any field of life prevent progression and prevent you from re, uh, becoming the best you can be. So this is what you want to watch out for, blowing things out of proportion. Try to take a realistic uh, viewpoint on the situation. The tenth faulty thought pattern is minimizing your achievements. Like saying that it was easy and that's why you succeeded or it was easy that day and that's why I won. This line of thought lowers your self-esteem and this is very unfortunate since all of your actions and in the end your level of success come from what you believe about yourself. Ask yourself whether this is really so. Do other people agree with your assumptions? Is this real? Celebrate your successes no matter how small they may seem to you. The 11th a faulty thought pattern is um, mistaking feelings for facts. You are in love with someone and you feel that they are the only person who can ever make you happy. You feel you cannot take one more day or cannot continue with this even though the benefits you will reap if you continue will be enormous. These are just two examples of mistaking feelings for facts. You may say, I feel like I'm losing my mind or I know this will never succeed. I know I can't get a higher price for for this thing that I did or all of these are feelings that are not connected to reality and they limit you from ever really trying to do things differently or to get more than what you think you can, you can get. This will surely limit you from any opportunity of success. Ask yourself if this is what you are feeling or if this is really real. Now the twelfth and last faulty thought pattern is having too high demands of yourself. And this is a very rigid pattern of thinking and puts a heavy weight on your shoulders and all other people who you are in contact with. 
I must do this. I should have this. He should have done that. She should have done this. This type of thinking lowers your self-esteem, especially when you don't stand up to your expectations. And this leads to resentment when other people don't stand up to your expectations. It also burns you out and leaves you tired and frustrated from your results. You need to recognize your accomplishments and recognize your advancements so that you can continue to move forward towards your dream. Now, I will conclude seven action steps that you can take to help you improve your negative thought patterns. And the first one is ask yourself if this is really real. Is what I am feeling a real indication to what is or was going on? Do not make assumptions based on your feelings. Look for evidence. Ask colleagues what they think. Perhaps you can break the habit and prove that uh, your thinking, your line of thinking was wrong. The second step is to learn self-acceptance. Accept yourself as you are. Nobody is forcing you to improve yourself. Nobody is forcing you to change. Do this only if, you, if this is what you desire to do. Okay, the next one is to be kinder to yourself. Would you judge others as you judge yourself? Probably not as harshly. So treat yourself with more courtesy and dignity. And the next step is if you have the habit of taking on all of the blame for all of the situations that you are in, ask yourself whether this is really so, that you are the only one to blame. Were you the only one responsible for the result? It is important to see things realistically. Divide it up in a pie chart and take on only the responsibility that is really yours. Now, on the other hand, if you are blaming others for your situation, taking on too little responsibility, then perhaps you also had a side in the results. Think about this and take responsibility for what you did do so that you can improve yourself and learn to empower yourself from the situation. Also, you want to, as I mentioned before, to see the gray. Things are not black and white. There are many other colors in between these extremes. We are complex beings and most situations are also complex and this change in perspectives will help, perspective will help you examine the situation through the right eyes and look at it so that you can really take it on. The sixth step is to leave out the shoulds and musts and I can't and I can't take this or this line of thinking increases your stress levels. Downtone these extremes. For example, this is not uh, advisable, preferable, or desirable. And so this makes it a little more, a less intense, less extreme. This will help reduce the pressure on your back and let you go through life more easily. And lastly, you may want to go over the negative thought patterns that I mentioned when you are under stress or in a negative state to help you pinpoint the negative thought patterns that you are, that are behind your line of thinking. This will help you slowly become more conscious of your thoughts and actions so that you can prevent negative thought patterns from taking over your life completely. So as I always do with these videos, I will provide you with a question to ask yourself so that you can help move your life to a better place for you. And the question of the day is, in which areas in my life am I stressed, am I underperforming, or procrastinating? And which thought patterns are behind this behavior? So look at the different uh, negative thought, faulty thought patterns that I mentioned before. Uh, determine which one of these negative th thought patterns is moving you to behave in this way in this situation and is causing you stress at this moment. So um, let's move on to the affirmation of the day. And the affirmation of the day is, I abandon all thoughts that no longer serve me and prevent my growth. I abandon all thoughts that no longer serve me and prevent my growth. Now tell this to yourself as many times as you remember to do so today because an affirmation has the power to transform your life. If you like this video, it was a little bit long, I know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this type of um, coaching videos. And um, also, please visit my website if you have any concerns to ha that, that have to do with health and well-being and nutrition. Thank you very much for joining me.